and it didn't matter if it changed, it didn't matter. I just knew this is where I'm gonna lock my train up because this is gonna go somewhere special. This is so unique. And then, thank God, Jen came along because that vision got crystal clear and then it was just like lightning, bolt, fire, here we are. And um, so, what we wanted to share, have you guys share today is vision. Yeah, where we come from an amazing place, but where are we headed, what can we expect? Um, just really share from your hearts. Thanks, Kim. That's awesome. Well, uh, when she asked me vision, thank you so much, Kim. You know, vision is an interesting thing because it's always in the future, right? You know, no one, it doesn't take much vision to see today, right? Everybody can see today. Vision is about seeing what isn't. It's about creating up here in your head something that, you know, maybe experience or something that comes to you, gives you the capacity to create something that is not and then start working towards it in little tiny baby steps. And, and I love Savvy and Jen loves Savvy. I can tell you what Savvy is today is not the vision. What we are today is a great start of where we're gonna go, right? And so it's really fun. We, I said, I, anytime I talk about vision, the one thing about it is like it's hard for me, if not impossible to talk about vision without talking about Jen connecting with that. Because it's not just my vision, it's, it's what we're building together and what we're co-creating inside the vision. But, just a little bit, I'll tell you just kind of the upper top level, what really matters to me, and what kind of put us down this savvy path, actually. What, a, a, a vision really can't happen unless you're passionate about something, first of all. You have to have some form of passion to be able to spend the time and the energy and the hours and the money and just all the incalculable costs that it actually takes to achieve what you're really trying to build. Each one of you, it's true, you know, if someone knew how much work it was to move forward, a lot of people wouldn't move forward, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people would, would just, they would stop before they do that. And I can say I've been doing this 30 years, so I've lost my naiveness. I kind of know what it's gonna take to move forward. And so to actually move forward, I better believe in it. And I gotta tell you something, we're building something that I believe in, I know Jen believes in, and I also know you guys believe in. It's so fun to be able to take a, something like this and watch the group of like-minded people, our tribe, reconnect, come. You know, your tribe just kind of shows up and you hook on each other and you have core, core things that you believe in together. And so for me, I, I will just say, and maybe Jen will use a little different words, a little different language. I know her heart's the same. You know, my overriding primary goal in life, actually, is to be able to influence people to a better mindset. Uh, to influence people. There's a lot of people, I don't know, you know, it's like, I was talking to my daughter about her high school, and there's no mindset class in the whole school. <laughs> there's nothing, it's like it teaches all kinds of things, but it doesn't teach the way to think and the best way to learn. And maybe there are some schools that have that, but I, I happen to believe that happiness begins with right thinking. And right thinking always starts with places like gratitude, you know, recognizing that you're, you be grateful for what you have already. If we're like never happy until, oh, if I get that or if this happens, then I'll be happy. We always push off our happiness. We find that we like die unhappy, right? And then we find some people that are so amazingly grateful and love-based and grace, they give everyone grace. They, they don't count their harms, right? And they don't look in other people for weakness. You know, they're like, oh, this and is what they do is they spend their time looking for greatness in other people. And so to me, and I know to Jen, you know, we wanted to create a community. We still want more than anything else to create an ever-expanding community of people who are grateful, who love each other, a tight-knit community where people feel safe and we can grow together. Because I'll tell you something, doesn't matter where any of us are at, myself included, I got a lot of growing to do still ahead of me. I make a lot of mistakes. I don't beat myself up because I know it's a journey and it's in a classroom and if you, what doesn't work today, guess what, keep working and tomorrow you're gonna be better at it, right? And so I can look at everything like that, grace giving first of all to myself. And so I hope each one of you, first of all, and our whole community looks at yourself and recognizes and you really are freaking amazing as you are. And you're gonna get more amazing. And so we bring people in our community that our society our society has a lot of people beating themselves up, you know, that their self-worth is low, you know, they don't feel a lot of love. 
you know, I love that Harvard study that says, you know, it's like the 40 year study that shows the keys to happiness. And over all the studies, they've looked at everything they can. It really just boils down to one thing. You know, people with good relationships are pretty darn happy. And, you know, all the other stuff is just little side adventures to the happiness journey. And so I would say this is the beginning of some beautiful relationships, wouldn't you? I think this is a happy group of people, and we're going to continue to grow our tribe. So, goal number one, where the company is going number one, is expand this team everywhere. And, that, and you know, what's, what's interesting about that is I can't just expand it, and Jen can't expand it. We can throw a vision out, but you expand it. And when you recruit, what you're essentially doing is you're recruiting people to your mindset and your vision. When you're full of positivity and you overcome all kinds of problems, you'd be shocked at how many people are just drawn to that. They're drawn to you. You know, they're drawn towards you. And this is just a community and a culture and a product set that gives you an excuse to talk to someone and invite them into your world and just love them all. And to me, that's our community, that's our culture. That's why, you know, more than anything, I'm very, very mindful of great positive energy, especially one towards another. You know, I'm still that guy. I, I hate to be that guy because sometimes I think I'm not, you know, in the sense that I watch TV and two people are nice to each other. And I'm like, oh, they were good to each other. <laughs> <laughs> I love people that are good towards each other, right? I love that. And uh, I hope that we hope to make, create that kind of company. Well, with that as a tight mindset vision, and we grow that community around the world, that really is empowerment, right? That, when we talk empowerment, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, you know, we lobby against Congress to get some extra benefit or, you know, whatever it might be. Those are all great. That's not our purpose. My purpose is, you know, and our purpose is not a political organization. You know, we're not going to, we're, we're going to just love up on each other. I'm going to see the best to you every single time. And you know, even if the even if the worst shows up in any of us, our community sees past the worst. We can see inside you that there's a best. And eventually our best comes out all the time. Just naturally. It comes out all the time. And we got somebody says, Wow, that's who you are. So a, a powerful community of people who love each other and who care about each other. And that's why this thing, this this us connecting in a time when people are disconnected. It's so powerful for me. And what I hope more than anything from this event, and like I say, I'm a guest at this event, but thank you, Tom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to say this thing. I hope we go home and we're on fire and we don't let a day go by and we jump out there to everyone we know and we say, this community is life. I love it here. I met my tribe, and guess what? I've met your tribe. You just don't, you don't know it yet. <laughs> but I met your tribe, and they're already waiting to love up on you every single minute. You know, so... That's the community and culture we want to build. We want to love, we want to trust. You can come to us, you know, we're, Jen and I are not afraid of problems. We don't, it's not a kumbaya environment. If there's something that's not working, there's something that can improve, we actually really want to know about it, right? That's not negative. That's what we do for each other in the community. We want to grow better, we want to take yesterday's problems and, you know, make them tomorrow's opportunities. So that's the focus of the company from that standpoint. That's number one. And by the way, it's the same thing inside the company. You can't be outside the company, something different you want inside the company. So real focus on our side is to create an internal and external culture where people feel loved, embraced, and supported. So there's the long, that's the big overarching umbrella. Then when you come down to the company itself, the products we produce, the opportunity we produce. Uh, I, I would just say, and, and I'm sure Channel says a little bit different. I, I, what I, what we're working on, you guys, is something that hasn't been done. It's something sustainable. If you look at direct selling, you always see that eventually, direct selling companies that are 30 years old have, have, a, they have more than a couple of products. What we do is new products every single week. And you'll see. I mean, think about that. Almost every direct selling company has a product that stays the same all the time. So what happens when that product's getting low on the inventory shelves? There's an automatic trigger. It says, oh, order more, same thing, order more, same thing, order more. Every year they introduce a new product or two to get a lot of excitement. And we, we're, not, we're introducing about four, five, six new products a week. And so, and we're doing that in seven sizes as much as we can. And we're doing that in a multitude of colors. So where most companies have one single SKU set, we have 35. 
where most companies in their whole warehouse will look back and say, you know, we've got 72 SKUs, we've got a lot of products. Well, we look back and say we've had over 80,000 SKUs. So the enterprise that we're creating is not a simple enterprise. And those products go not down the street or on the corner at the local vitamin manufacturing plant, you know, where it takes a truck a half an hour to, you know, permade it and deliver. They're like donuts, you know, deliver hot fresh vitamins, whatever. <laughs> That's not us. You know, ours are literally created from far flung supply chains around the world that literally have vendors in every single part. And I'll let Jen get into some of that. She's been working her guts out to create the, you know, a product and brand experience. I say Jen, but I'm also looking at some other people that are working their guts out. It's Rhonda, Rhonda over there, Rhonda, amazing superstar. And so, you know, to, to deliver the brand promise of absolutely consistent, high quality clothes, the sizing's right, the, the fabrics are things we know and understand, and products that you can't find anywhere else in the world. That's, to me, that's really important. Should I answer? <laughs> um, so, so that's, I'll let Jen talk about that, but internally, here's what I have envisioned as well. I want to build an opportunity-based community that can allow people to get out of the grind. You know, I've been fortunate because over a few years I've been able to build some businesses that always allowed me time and financial freedom. And uh, that's been a drive for me. You know, all of my kids have seen the world, you know, at young ages. I want your family to see the world if that's what you actually aspire to. I want you to be able to put them in whatever schools you want if that's what you aspire to. I want the financial side of people's lives to stop. Because you look at people and probably the number one thing that they take to bed at night, that they worry about day in and day out, your friends, everybody, you know, they're worried about money. You don't have to have money, they worry about money. You know, it, it just doesn't need to be that way. So I want to create, and along with each one of you guys, an opportunity that says, look, it's not a 10 minute opportunity. I would say these things are at least three to five years, and hopefully you're with us for 25 years. Mm -hmm. But in three to five years of hard work, you can maybe build something sustainable and long term. Nothing makes me more excited than it. You know, when a distributor comes up and says, oh my gosh, I'm excited. And the wife says, because I got my first distributor like in, you know, Myanmar or whatever it might be. Some far flung place across the world, and you didn't get them. Because you found somebody, you, you talked to your sister, your cousin, your neighbor, you talked to somebody you knew and loved, and you found your tribe and grew around the world. So, I've spoken way too much already. I'll turn the time to Jen, but I hope you can see it from an opportunity standpoint, from a personal development and a community standpoint. We really have something that I don't know is equal. I don't know what's duplicate. We really are different. So, Jen, go. Jen. I, I said Jen, go. Jen always go. Jen, slow. <laughs> is this on? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll just say a few brief words, but I really want you guys to hear from Rhonda and really know and, and understand what we've been doing with the product. But just to echo something Ken said, you know, he said this word safe. And it's something that I really felt and heard from a lot of you as I got to speak to you and connect with you and spend time with you. And, you know, safe. So what does that mean? It means permission granted be um, that is really one of the core, core, core elements of savvy that you all are latching onto. I've heard so many people that have said, I've never felt so me before. Not that they're not them in their life, but in a big environment when there's so many people, they can show up as themselves and not feel judged and feel loved and feel accepted, right? That, that's part of this community where we have, I mean, how far can we really go if we're not authentic with one another? How far can we really go if we're sitting there judging somebody else, right? We believe that we and you guys are the authors of our reality, right? We create our reality. We are all artists. And in that, you're going to get what you validate. And that's why, you know, Ken and I always talk about there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of hate, there's a lot of negativity just in our world in general. So naturally, that'll seep in in every area of life. But to have the compassion, to have the gratitude, to have the strength, to truly just see past anything, any apparency that may be of someone's personality or persona, it's really just a fear or an insecurity. And to be able to see love and validate what is amazing about each and every person in your life brings peace and also brings power because then you get to create more of that in your life. Okay? 
So my hope for each and every one of you, because you're in an interesting industry, you have a volunteer workforce. You're going to attract people that you don't even you don't even know. They may be attracted from a person, from a person, from a person, from a person, right? And now here they are in this community, and you're leading them, right? And then there may be some people where, pers where personalities clash. There may be some different types, right? And how do we still build a strong community during that? And then you find something that you validate and you love about that person and you focus on that. And then we call them to a higher level of love and ourselves as well. You know, just like Ken, we talk about this all the time. We all have so much to learn. This has been the biggest growth experience in my life. And it's something that Ken and I wake up every morning to say, how are we gonna grow today? How are we gonna get better today? What is there for us to learn today to put more love into, to put more gratitude into? You know, what's the, what's the hardest, ugliest thing that can show up in front of us and we can still handle it with grace, with love, and, um, and get a result that will fulfill our responsibility, which is to create a platform for you guys, right? And I'll say that one last thing, that's our responsibility that we don't take lightly, right? It keeps us up at night, not with any doubt or any fear, but with excitement. We, we wake up in the morning and we're on fire. We're up late at night, not tired, we're energized, right? Like, you know, Ken and others always talk about my energy. It's because I am so on purpose with creating this platform for you guys, as is Ken and Rhonda and, all, and everyone in HQ, right? This is such a deep purpose for us and we know why we're doing it. So to watch you guys take it, see it, see the vision of it, right? What Ken was saying, not what is today, right? That's easy. Like we said last night, you guys aren't normal. Anyone mm -hmm. can do that. Anyone can come in when it's perfect and work the business. Anyone can come in when it's perfect and see, oh, I see what it is. But for you guys to say, oh, I see what it is and I believe in it before it's what it is, is massive. That's huge. You guys are unique. You have something special. So I want to, I want each and every one of you to take that and run with it because you are a part of creating Safi. Like this right here, I feel the positivity, the authentic positivity, which is strong. It's not complacent. It's not naive, right? It's not rosy glasses saying everything's great. Everything's great. Like, no, no, that, that's not positivity. Positivity is actually a, a knowingness that you create your reality and you find what is good and you focus on it and the rest goes away because you're not even validating it, right? And then we'll handle that. We tackle problems all day long, every day. You guys haven't even seen the result of what we've been doing for months behind the scenes. You guys haven't even seen the results, but you're gonna start to see it. You're gonna just start to hear those announcements and then you're gonna start to see, I, meaning you, I was right for staying in this company and for believing in it and for trusting you're gonna feel very validated and right because you're gonna see the results of what we've been working so hard on. And it's a beautiful company that you all can feel proud of, just as we are so proud of you guys. Yeah. Yay! So, I want to introduce Rhonda. So, Ken and I found this lady, and as soon as we started interviewing her, you're gonna make me cry. As soon as we started, I love oh. As soon as we started, <laughs> As soon as we started um, interviewing Rhonda, the first thing we thought was her heart. And you know, we used to interview, by the way, guys, for months. We've had people come in, and then we're like, okay, let's walk them out. <laughs> people come in and look at our supply chain, and they walked out. And they're like, I don't know how to handle this. You know, and we, we have, like Ken was saying, a complicated business. But the thing is, simplicity is one of our superpowers, if you haven't noticed already. We know how to break things down and boil things down to a simplicity. We don't believe in the appearance of complexity. It actually doesn't exist in our world. We can make things simple. Even our vendors will say, and our partners say, how did you guys make this so simple? They're like, we've never seen someone come in here in the fashion industry, and like Rhonda and I did, demystify it so much and make it so simple to be able to get products within 30 days. Right? Guys, that's huge. I don't know if you heard me slip that in there. But that's something we've been working on for months. Um, but anyway, so I want to introduce Rada, her heart. That's the one thing we felt. And the people that you're going to start to meet in the months ahead as we do some announcements that have been here working with us, they have the true heart. They're interested, not trying to be interesting. They're not sitting there trying to say, be interested. You know, be inter I want everyone to be interested in me. 
right? They're interested in you. They're focused on you. We are a service-based headquarters here at Savvy. And we have to have the intention, and can I make sure the people we bring in have the intention of service and gratitude and making sure they know any light on us gets shined right back on you guys, because this is what it's about, right? We may be sitting up here now, but in a few minutes we'll hop off, and then it'll be all of you guys. And once our vision is concrete, you'll probably maybe see us, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you guys want. So um, Rhonda has that heart. She has that compassion. She has that gratitude as the highest currency. The things that she does in her life outside of work speaks to her heart, who she is, how much she cares. Um, and even taking the level, the company to a new level, not just product, but sustainability and so many initiatives that she's working on. So she has over 20 years in the fashion industry. Um, when we worked with our partners in LA, when we said Rhonda Michaels was with us, they knew of her. They know of her name. They said she was my boss's boss. She has an incredible reputation in the fashion industry from a corporate side and the knowledge she has on how to take a concept and bring it to market on season, on trend of the quality we need is um, something that's really blown Ken and I away. So she leads up um, our product development, she's a merchandiser, and she's been working her butt off. Um, her eyes bleeding every night. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but it's a joke. Man. And uh, we just love this woman. So Rhonda, I want you to share a little bit about, um, about what you've been working on, what you feel the product is, just anything. And guys, feel free to ask questions as well. Here's Rhonda, guys, she's amazing. <laughs>
it's a challenge. It is this puzzle that you're constantly adjusting and massaging and you're looking at numbers and you're seeing, okay, well, if we did it this way, what is what is the result of that? And and coming to Jen and Ken and looking at things proactively and, and trying to come up with a solve because you don't want to come to them without a solve. But then they say, well, wait, let's stand back. Let's look at it this way. You're like, genius. I didn't think of that. So together, we are one to serve you guys. And, and it's so exciting because as a merchandiser, I get to take Jen and Ken's vision and the long range plan. And it's up here, high level, as an overarching initiative. And we bring it down level by level. So here is where we want to go. We take it down a level and say, all right, how are we going to get there? We break it up into pieces. We run some numbers. We look at it every which way we can. And we say, OK, here's women's. Here's our product line. Here's fit. Here's every day. Here's Lux. Well, how, what's the percentage of each? We break that down again. All right, it's going to be 10, 70, and another 10, perhaps, or another 20. OK, well, what's going on out in the market? What are the new colors? Well, it's these 10 colors, but how does that relate to all of our partners? Are they gonna love it? Let's talk to some people. Let's do some online um, testing. So we run some more numbers and then we look at, all right, well, how many sleeveless tops do we need? How many leggings? What if we did leggings with pockets? What if we did a legging that turned into a parachute? <laughs> <laughs> You're always constantly thinking <laughs> and and for me, it's just, in my mind, I'm always like piecing things, so I'm always just compartmentalizing it. And then I have to stop and go, wait, hi, there, there's the blue sky, there's things out here. But it's it's so fun and it's such a passion, and I love clothes so much, and what girl doesn't, but to be able to work with these guys and the team back at home, the talent that they have, and the big hearts, and, and we all have, the main purpose, which is to serve you, and, and we're around, we're around like-minded people, and it's just so fun to create. And what's great about this is I can, I can play with fashion and put cute outfits together, but I also can run numbers, so I get the best of both worlds. I don't want to be a designer; I just want to put cute outfits together for you guys to love and wear. And I want feedback, and I want to hear what works and what doesn't work, and for all bodies and all ages and all sizes and all colors and. And I get to do that with these guys, and, and I'm so so thankful. And and I get to I get to talk about it at home on the weekends to my friends, and 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 say, wow, you guys, I'm really a part of something that's going to take over the world. And and let's bring all the dogs with me. And, and, and <laughs> it just is so exciting. And and getting us to a place where we now can have sustainable fabrics and and talk to our kids about the environment and, and do what's good for the earth is like the next overarching thing that we're working on and, and packaging and how do we bring recycled fabrications and organic, what's the next best thing after organic cotton because everyone has that now. We want to be on the leading edge and we want people to follow but we also don't want to forget where we came from and forget what makes everyone happy and what sells. And people may come and go and companies may think that they can duplicate what we have, but the thing is, is that they can't duplicate the community. And that's what this is. I just want to take our time is probably up. I don't know because nobody put a no red lights on that. <laughs> I just want to say we've been working on this vision just like Jen said for a long time. And it's just adorable. Beginning today and throughout the month of December, you're going to see a lot of organizational changes inside the company to position us much, much stronger. Believe me, we're not going to be the same company come January 1st as we were November 1st, even December 1st. We have some strong, strong players coming on that we'll start announcing. So if you see some of those things in corporate, just be excited and recognize that we our capabilities increased. I don't know how many fold, infinite fold, you know, strong, strong players. So to be able to deliver on our brand promise uh, in 2021, we are really confident we're set up actually to do that. So anyway, it's pretty exciting for us. Yeah. Yeah. Get you guys to hear from the leaders now. Thank you, Tom Kim.
They join and then they go like this. I made like a billion dollars. <laughs> like Kenneth Hines the first month, right? Not a billion for context. But a lot of money the first month. And then you know, some people, most people, they gotta figure some stuff out, right? How many of you are more like, okay, I gotta figure some stuff out? And I don't know about you, depending on your age, and we're not gonna ask your age, but one thing that I've realized, the older that I get, the more that I really don't know, that I don't know. Right, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Maybe you don't know, but you don't know, right? The older you get, the more you realize, dang, I better get more hungry, I better start learning more. Something that impressed me, anybody know who John Maxwell is? Yeah. John Maxwell, like, he's a multi, he's the number one leadership trainer in the world. Why the flip is that dude <laughs> training at 70 something years old? And I'm like, dude, go retire now. Why doesn't he retire? because he wants to grow, he wants to learn. We have an itch inside us, a purpose inside us, and it's not fun doing it on the beach. And I think that's why you watch people like Sylvester Stallone and people that, that grow. So the point of that is you might as well, if you're in your 20s, thank goodness. If you're in your 30s, awesome. If you're in your 40s, even better. 50s, even better. But it's time to just stop fighting and grow to the potential that you're called to grow. Something that's dying. Kim and I are, gosh, I can't believe we're gonna call ourselves dinosaurs maybe a little bit. Maybe Matt Moore. Matt Moore might be a bigger dinosaur. <laughs> Made millions of dollars in this industry, been in this industry longer than us. And, but the, the, one, the one thing is, and I forgot my train of thought trying to make it funny. See, I'm not as funny as Matt. <laughs> not as funny as Matt. Um, Something was dying. Di dinosaurs in this industry. And the one thing that we realize is when we first joined this industry, the leadership depth the training, the psychology, the, the, who we have to become was everything. And people didn't just, people, they joined a company and they stuck it out because of they learned, they grew, they developed themselves. One of the greatest leader trainers in the history of our industry, Art Williams, built a billion dollar business income too. Two million distributors. And it wasn't sexy leggings or athletic leisure. Anybody remember what he did? He built sure. a team of two million distributors like what we do. You know what he sold? It's really exciting. It was life insurance. So anybody wanna sell life insurance instead of athletic leisure here? No. Right? But the one thing that he taught me, Kim, it was Kim and I's first company is, your movement, our movement will only grow and it will only sustain as fast as our leadership is developed. So I wanted to bring that up because you're gonna hear from people that are forging through the challenges, that have pushed through the, I, I, I don't even know, what's a bigger word for bumps? Bombs, okay? They pushed through some dang flipping bombs in the last year, right? How many realize we had some bombs in the last year? But you wanna hear something still crazy? We still keep growing. Yeah, we had a couple bumps going, you know, break even or, or even have some monthly challenge, but just every, like we're back up, we're back up. And I can see next month, exponentially growing. Yes. Yeah. If you're not exponentially growing, if you're not growing, you gotta figure out the big question, just why. Be hungry. If we're gonna build the best culture in the world, we can't just do it by making a bunch of money. If we're gonna build the best culture in the world, we can't just get used to systems working perfectly. Because systems do change, systems can modify. But one thing that won't be modified is the depth of your leadership, the depth of our culture, and the foundation of our team. And when we build that foundation, it's not gonna be easily swayed as much. And we've got some bosses that God has blessed us with to help build this gang foundation. And we're gonna bring them up right now. And you wanna take notes. 
So help him help me. And by the way, this was actually really hard because we have multi-millionaires. We have Matt Morrow here. We have so many powerful leaders that are here. We only can, we had to limit it for time's sake because we've got to get going. Uh, we only have like five or six. So we had to do it based on just the numbers of highest qualified volume. So it's actually highest qualified volume. 